didn't ask. That's right. Oh, that's right. Y'all glance all you want. Hey guys, it's your girl Asia Gay Geek X Chic, and we're back with another reaction to Motherland Fort Salem. We're now on to episode four of season two, which is called Not Our Daughters. Lots that they're kicking off the season with. I'm really excited to get into the episode, but before we do, you know the drill. If you've been here before and you like what you see, please consider hitting that subscribe button. That way you'll be notified when I do more reactions to Motherland, as well as a lot of other shows that are in this same kind of supernaturally, superhero-y, all that kind of really fun out there, fantastical stuff. So if you are interested in seeing more of this phase, please go ahead and join us. We'd love to have you. All right, that out of the way, guys, let's get into the episode right about now. Your true greatness awaits. Oh, this is for her making people have to go and get tested now. Are stronger together. How much do they have to pay this girl to smile this hard? You know she ain't that happy. <laughs> oh, wow, they already got Vice President's daughter up in there, huh? Cut, for the love of God. Meanwhile, back on campus. Some people might get offended by them. And maybe some people just need to get over themselves. You know what? I'm not. <laughs> right, my guy's like, things got awkward. I'm responsible for the rest of the two women having died. Look, if that's how you took what I said, I did. But you still said it. Yeah, you did. So helping the survivors get settled is the least I can do. Oh, the way you completely did the opposite of what you wanted. This is why you gotta be careful. Hard lesson. You really should think before you speak, because words, girl, those, those, you can't take them back. And they will live on for years after you've said them. If we followed your orders, we wouldn't know about the Camarilla using hearing tests to identify witches. At least now that the testing centers must stand a chance of finding our sisters first. Thank we you. The testing. So you work for Petra now? Yep. You I trust her. Protocol ...to make sure President Wade saw things your way and thought them your way and said them. Your way. Your way. Bitch. I didn't give you permission to speak freely. I didn't ask. That's right. Oh, that's right. Y'all glance all you want. I'll do respect, but this is Petra's operation. And it's my army. Oh, is it? Not, not the countries. It's not for the countries. Her army. Okay. You did this to yourself, Alder. If you actually trusted anybody, they would be more open to trusting you back. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have laughed at that side, but it was kind of perfect. And I have no doubt that this will bring us closer together than we've ever been. That's the way it looks behind you. Okay, here come the haters. Uh-oh. Someone tells me those are not cupcakes. He's working with them. He didn't even look. They should have opened that. Intelligence does often have a hard time keeping track of the general's comings and goings. Mm hmm You may want to find a source closer to the story. Thank you. Oh, I'm on the... <laughs> can't get any closer, girl. <laughs> Literally sharing the same mind. Is Tally stronger for having gone through what she did with Gary? And I'm stronger for having experienced Sola. That's right. I'm stronger for my too. Relationships do not define you, but they do hurt like hell. <laughs> I love that there's like playing cards for these guys. What a world. It's like Tinder, but hard copy. My mother tells me you have plenty of available options. You shouldn't be surprised by this information. <laughs> He's like, excuse me, just because you don't want me doesn't mean nobody does, girl. I think it's really cool the way they were able to incorporate the masks for this, actually. Oh, that was meta. <laughs> I think you know, be under your way. I honestly wouldn't have the first idea what to do with her. Do with me? Not broken the right the words, Pops. I you were broken. And you're no better than the protesters waiting for us at the center. Well, since you bring that up, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I'm not. I was hoping that your performance today makes it more fun. Uh, less intimidated. It's the best he's got, apparently. Thanks, Dad. You're a vice president. You give speeches for a living, huh? It's 
so unfair using her like this, but not surprising. No, just me? Okay. I feel like the concert at the church is a little better than that one, but you know what? No one's perfect. They're like, was that supposed to impress us? We already know you can manipulate things. <laughs> and Agassi is yelling with her full chest. I love it. Uh, that's actually an act of treason. Arrest that man. Ooh, this shot though. We gotta admit the shot's pretty boss. Are they trying to push all to do something stupid? Because I feel like she's gonna take the bait. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Like this imagery of the police cooperating with people who are about to do some stuff that they're not supposed to. It feels very meta. For yes. Today, we lie. What did you have in mind? And the way she said for day, like for today, like she hasn't been lying for the last 300 years. The truth would actually be a change, ma'am. Just let me protect you today while I still can, okay? He is your dad. Please. He knows. He's in on it. He's in on it. I know it. He's in on it. He's gotta be. I'm telling you, he's up a ranks. A Camarilla. I feel it. <laughs> this is some dark-ish. It's kind of cold, but very dark. Like, I feel like y'all should disperse because this is what it... <sighs> Don't let them isolate you. Girl! They just... Why do they keep coming for the bellwethers like this? Oh, Abigail, you should have known better. Yeah. Hello, you really think they were going to just wait for you to use your magic? Your daughter's... I mean, can you really say that with your full chest? Riel's fine. I mean it. The, mycel the mycelium or whatever is not going to let her die. Who is that for? I thought maybe they might try to grab Riel because now the vice president knows what she can do. Really? She got that hurt by a gust of wind. Y'all just... All right, you were distracted. I'm gonna let it go. Oh no, Abigail's mom has already thought that her daughter died once. Almost. Abigail like, bring it. I got some anger. Oh no. She, you know, girl, if you hadn't hurt yourself the other day, show your face, you coward. This jerk. Not today. I know you're not doing this to. <gasps> How dare you cut her beautiful skin, you sons of. You gonna pay? Oh, my poor baby girl. But she needs backup, guys. <laughs> All right, maybe not. I understand. She's kind of broken at the moment. That was very close. And they took her when she were going to try to take her when she was alive. That son of a. Oh, hell no. Somebody need to get hurt. Scylla just had to make sure she got seen, huh? Look, I just feel like this is not the time. My girl's got enough to deal with right now without dealing with her spree ex. Hi, my daughter just got stabbed. Leave me alone. They attacked Abigail. Specifically. Be careful. You've been sedated. So you use stronger medicine. <laughs> right? She's clearly awake. And I couldn't do a damn thing about her. You were outnumbered. I walked right into their trap. You yeah, did. But you were not in the right mind space. Because I failed at saving her too. You didn't though, sweetie. You I couldn't have possibly known that was gonna happen. Alder's been telling everyone it was the spree to keep panic from spreading in the witch community. She said we didn't have to worry about the king. She 
told me to let it go. She lies a lot. One night after another, huh? Tally, all Alder does is lie. Mm. You said it in the dream. That's always someone else's life she's playing with. Finally, you've caught on. No, don't tell her. No, Tally. You cannot take Alder on yet, girl. Please don't be stupid and let her know that you know because she don't know that you know that you know. Okay. I mean, I bless her righteous anger, but we all know that Alder is just gonna manipulate her like she does everybody. No more lies. Who is Nick to Batan? Yeah, with my full chest. Okay. Tally, you know what you don't do? You don't walk up to a centuries old witch and just blurt out that you know business she clearly don't want you to know when she's around her biddies and when she has all the power in the world to possibly just end you and make an excuse for it I, bless tally like i know she comes from a good place i know she's just so righteous that she can't help it but oh, you're killing me all right guys that was the latest episode of motherland fort salem and it's getting messy it's getting messy and alder cannot keep up and I don't know. I don't know what it's going to take for her to realize that the lies aren't working and that she needs to stop thinking that she can handle all this on her own. Too many lives are being lost. Too much is spinning out of control. And it's like she just keeps falling behind the eight ball. And it just it's so frustrating because just as Tally said, it's always somebody else's life that gets to be played with. Alder always stays safely behind her biddies when everybody else is taking the fall. Again, because she somehow thinks that she's the one who knows the way everything's supposed to go. This is what's so bothersome about Alder's character, but I'm gonna get to that at the end because that's kind of like what came at the end of the episode. Let's talk about first, well, let's talk about Abby. Abigail, you know, it, this has been culminating, unfortunately. She has been dealing with a lot. I mentioned in the last review, if you watch that, that, you know, she's just, it's been blow after blow this season and it started from last season, of course, but it just feels like every time she thinks she might be making some headway, something comes along to kind of knock the wind out of her sails. A lot of who Abigail has built herself up to be is based on her, her family name, her upbringing, and recent events have made her start to question everything about what she thought herself to be. Now, as we saw her, bless her heart, she f blames herself for Charvel because she wasn't able to fight against something she didn't even know existed. But it's hard, right? Like if you're there, you saw your cousin who you love to death and all of a sudden, just like that, she's gone. You couldn't do anything. Like that's just, the, sadly, I don't know anybody that wouldn't have felt a little bit of survivor's guilt over that situation, right? She just feels so power, so powerless. And that's not something witches are used to feeling, especially a bellwether, right? They fancy themselves so the most powerful in the line. They're one of the original bloodlines. And so as Brielle, who's just been a sage of advice lately, which I'm wondering if it's the mycelium that's kind of speaking through her a little, but as she said to her, like, these aren't failures, right? Her not being able to save Charvel was not a failure. She had no idea what to expect. She didn't know the Camarilla. She didn't know what the Camarilla were capable of. There's no way she could have possibly anticipated that and, and didn't done anything to stop it. That plan was months in advance before she even knew what the Camarilla was. The whole thing with Adil, all right, in fairness, Abigail, she snapped at him. She did not need to be that hard with him. She did not need to say what she said. However, we're, in, we're, we're all human, right? We're imperfect. We act a certain type of way sometimes when we're upset, when we're hurt. And clearly Abigail didn't mean to lash out at him, but he was the closest target. And that's what ended up happening. It's, it is her fault in that, yes, she could have taken a step back, but that's a lesson for her. As Raelle said, now, hopefully she will take a step back the next time she's feeling irritated and not just let her mouth fly. <laughs> we all know Adil's all right. Like he clearly, he's angry, but as he said, unfortunately his anger is more because there's a part of him that clearly does blame himself for what happened to his people, which is not right or fair, but again, human. But maybe this time away from Abigail and away from just the college and just kind of having some time to think on his own will help him to get a little perspective on that. But yeah, my poor girl, I felt bad for her. And that trap, it's a very dark trap. It's very sad. These Camarilla folks, whoever that guy was, the guy who's doing the testing, I think that's the same one. Is it? But I digress. Whoever was there and who trapped her, 
this is more than just we've taken your voice and figured out how to replicate it. We figured out a way to block your songs and your magic. This was psychological warfare as well. Like using her her cousin's vo vocal cords to mimic her voice, to call out to her. That was dark. That was an emotional attack and very targeted, very specific. It was a trap specifically for Abigail. So... That tells me, you know, it's kind of interesting because obviously a lot of what Abigail has done has been based on the idea that she thinks she's not special enough. But clearly there is something very special and powerful about the Bellwether line because that's the only line we know of that they've targeted thus far. Like there's something about them Bellwether vocal cords that they're trying to, I, I think that they're probably trying to recreate in some way. And even though Abigail clearly is not going to feel that with a giant incision in her throat, that there has to be something. They're after something very specific, I think. We don't know what it is yet, but the Bellwethers are definitely important. And specifically, they wanted Abigail and they wanted her vocal cords. So to me, that means there's a lot of power in them vocal cords. And I feel like we're going to find out what that is once Abigail figures out the proper healthy way to do it and not just screaming her throat raw. That was really heartbreaking, seeing her crying in Tally's arms there after everything. Like, that was a cry that's been needing to come out for a while for Abigail. That's, that is a cry of a frustrated, scared, just slightly defeated meltdown that she kind of needed to have that's been building up over the last few episodes. And I'm hoping now that she's kind of had her moment to let a little that that grief and that self pity out. Now she'll kind of stop and really think about how she can really move forward in a way, like I said, that's not detrimental to her health or impetuous and lean on her team, right? Like she's really been internalizing a lot of this rather than leaning on Rael and Tally, who've both shown themselves to be really solid rocks for her. So going into Rael, we didn't really get to see much about her fancy new powers out of this episode. This was a lot more, she was actually kind of backseat in this episode. I feel like this one was definitely more focused on the Bellwethers and of course, figuring out what's going on with the Camarilla and a lot of <laughs> uh, Arden's little oh, alders. So I keep calling her Arden. My apologies, you guys. I don't know why the name Arden is stuck in my head so much. Ah, alder, 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 alder. Alder's whole facade, her hold on the college and the army starting to slip away. That's kind of been the focal point. But on the side, we had a little bit of Rael. And now that Alder wants her to be her personal security detail. That's a little bit scary, but understandable. But outside of that, we saw, you know, Rael just kind of apparently trying to pick who it is that she's going to choose to father her children. Again, the whole thing, her seeing Scylla, there's not much to say about that because it was very brief, but clearly those two still have a connection. There's still a lot going down between the two of them. But as I said in the episode, I don't think this is the right time. First of all, on the Scylla side, she really has to stop with this pretending she's still so hardcore. The second thing is that there's just too much going on right now. Rael cannot be dealing with Scylla doing her own spree stuff and technically being an enemy of the army and being out there and also dealing with what the army needs her to do and dealing with the fact that her her unit's under attack like that's just too much <laughs> so I'm kind of glad that she was like you know what yeah I know that Scylla was there but I can't deal with it right now and I hope she sticks to that and yeah we've got Tally continuing on losing her faith in Alder again like this girl is so temperamental <laughs> like one minute she's like ah oh, and then now she's like, hold her. It's been driving her nuts. Of course, you know, that, that small little, you know, candle of worship she's got for Alder made her want to, of course, verify that her memory or what she's seeing is actually truth. But I'm like, why would you imagine this? Like, where would you get this from? It, it has to be true, Tally. Like, it came from Alder. You would never, and you wouldn't have any reason to have this or imagine this. So, but I get it. I get that she's really trying to make sure that this is real. And obviously you can't make a huge accusation like, hey, Alder is responsible for killing a bunch of innocent witches without having some sort of proof, which she's never gonna find, let's be real. This happened from the sounds of things at least three generate, three decades. So yeah, maybe the 60s, 50s or 60s. But the point is, Alder was there. Alder obviously altered a lot of things. So she probably made sure that any evidence short of that photo are wiped out that will connect her to what happened there. But digressing, I don't know why she would be so impetuous as to burst into Alder's office and think that she should confront her like that. But again, that's because Tally, bless her heart, being the innocent flower that she is, she always wants to believe that there's good in everyone. And as I said in the last episode, I do think she's picking up on the good intentions that Alder has somewhere in all that ego. 
but it was not a smart move to show her cards like this so soon and let Alder know that she knows about a very deep and dark secret that, let's face it, could get her killed. Which brings me into the final part, which is, of course, the fact that the witches are losing faith in Alder, and Alder's starting to pick up on the fact that she's losing her iron grip on the army. First, of course, when she found out about the, the secret side mission that Anacostia was on. Ooh, Anacostia was so saucy, and I lived for it. I love it. Sorry. Mm -mm. I just love it. Anyways, finding out that the girls have been doing things without Alder knowing because, you know, Alder's a little bit too wrapped up in her own self to recognize these things. You know that more than the fact that, <laughs> that, uh, What's her name? Petra got more done in like three weeks than Alder's gotten done in what, the last hundred years? That, you know, annoyed the crap out of her. But obviously the bigger thing being that, oh my God, like they didn't even think to talk to me. They, they conducted this whole thing with no fear of repercussion because they don't respect her anymore, right? Basically. And the fact that she basically tried to talk to Anacostia about it and Anacostia's like, girl, I already know. I'm up to, I'm hip to you. I know what you do. I know you're shady. And quite frankly, I only trust Petra now. I don't trust you like that. So I report to her now. <laughs> it sucks. I mean, then she was like, but I do need your okay to do this other thing because technically you're the only one who can give it. But just know I'm only asking you because you made it that way. <laughs> Love that both Petra and Anacostia made it very clear. Like, girl, we do not trust you anymore. Our eyes are on you. We are here because we believe in witches, not because we believe in you, girl. And then that very, very poignant line where Alder says, this is my army, right? Where when I think Anacostia said, this is Petra's, um, this is Petra's mission. And she's like, no, but it's my army. It's like, but that's not the way militaries work, Alder. Militaries are supposed to protect the greater good of a country. They're supposed to belong to the country that they're serving. But by your words, it sounds like you expect them to serve you. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, it's I think I'm gonna think on that for a minute, Alder. Think about where that's coming from. I feel like this season we're gonna see Alder unraveling and I'm here for it because it's not necessarily because I wanna see her suffer, but typically when you've gone down the path that she has for so long, one of the only ways to make a change is you usually need to hit a rock bottom of sorts. And I think Alder needs to have an unraveling and a real reality check in order for her to come back to whatever, if she ever was that person. I think that's what she's gonna need in order to find that person again and realize that she should be about all witches and not just what she perceives witchhood to be, so to speak, because nothing's gonna change until that happens. So I also think that there's gotta be a mole. There's probably a Camarilla mole in there. You can't get as far as they have without having at least one or two witches on your side. People who probably are either anti-Alder, anti the army, both maybe, who are working with them. So they were worried about the spree. There might be someone else in there that's actually working with the Camarilla. And clearly, as we saw, we've got police people who are in there. They probably have government people. And as I said before, the president knew. He knew, the vice president knew that attack was going to happen. That's why he got his daughter out of there. And I think what he's going to hope to do is maybe turn her into a spy to continue the work of dismantling the army from the inside. So we'll have to see if I'm right about those predictions, but either way, the season is continuing to impress me. So I enjoyed this very much. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and we will see you in the next video.